Hello, and welcome to session 29 of Donuts and Dragon Descent into Avernus. Uh, session 29. We are here. This is session 29. This one right here. Said that. Hey guys, this is did I already 20. say that? Yeah. <laughs> this is like the fourth session. This is session 29, guys. Uh, things might look a little bit different because we have abandoned the company known as Roll20. Uh, because it sucked. To put it well, okay. It's not. It's not that it sucked. It's just it that did what this it is needed. Ten billion times better, and we were naive optimized. to not be using this. Instead. Hey, do you know something even cooler? You know how long it took to load uh, maps and stuff? Like zero time. It, like, well, here's the thing. Because it had to load it all at once, I can right click any of the maps I want, and I can preload that scene. No more so I've loaded screens of death. Yeah, hopefully. So we are on uh, Foundry VTT uh, table right now. So hopefully that will improve everyone's everything. Uh, you are seeing the player view uh, on on what's being recorded. You can see Killeth <laughs> upside down now. We are still <laughs> using sirenscape as our music provider we vibin and oh we vibin all right hey uh amrian tell me a little bit about yourself uh oh you you got me completely off guard with that you do that every week <laughs> every week what <laughs> what all right, I will jump to somebody Maybe else. Well, up or something. Well, Amory I thinks. volunteer myself because I have something. Okay. I came prepared to this session. Killeth. <laughs> Killeth prepared for today. Uh, what is something we don't know about Killeth? One of her favorite things to do when she was younger uh, was build ships in bottles. Oh, that's oh. cute. Oh. So back at her mom's shop in her childhood room that she grew up in, there are shelves on the walls lined with all different shapes and sizes of ships and bottles. And some of them have like little like thaumaturgy, like cloud, like thunderstorms in the bottles with them mm -hmm. and like all sorts of cool stuff like that. Or like wind that blows the sails and flags. Oh, that is nifty. It's kind of like a, like that, that one like scene from Pirates of the Caribbean with the black pearl in the bottle and it's like shit's going on in the bottle. Mm. It's like its own little system in there. So Cool. Okay. Um Hey Pharaoh. Okay, I got something. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Alright. Sorry, Pharaoh. Fuck off. Amrian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me Amrian. tell me a little bit about you. Amrin quite enjoys Haggis and doesn't understand why everyone gives him a disgusted look, disgusted look when he mentions it. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. You can find Haggis Probably. in Baldur's Gate, but, you know, there is always the off chance it's not... It's questionable. It's questionably sourced. It may have been walking on the street five minutes prior. <laughs> it's Haggis! Feyre... What's a little bit of, tell me a little bit about yourself. Girl. Feyre believes in love at first sight. Oh, that's cute. Did you hear my hand hit my forehead? <laughs> yeah, I did. There was, there was a little bit of a clap there. So, mm -hmm. to be a complete teenager right there, huh? Uh-huh. I mean, she's she does worship the god yet. of love, so, you know... No. <laughs> she has no reason not to. Yeah, but I, isn't she gay for me? Is this canon yet? <laughs> I mean, her feelings have not been expressed outright. She's I mean, not confessed I mean, yet. I mean, she does. She is constantly checking out Killeth and her boobs. So. I that was oh, one interaction. Right. Ah! I hope I don't catch a charge because she. Well, I guess she's not a minor. In Faerun. Oh um, God! Don't let's not. Let's not discuss that. 
<laughs> has it been Let's alive? not discuss minimum <laughs> age long. limits in Faerun, please. <laughs> Much, but tell me. much worse things go on in Faerun as a whole, so we're just gonna. Well, yeah, but over we don't. Yeah, part. it's just, just, just glaze, just a light glaze over that information. Uh, Matomi. Yes. Well, uh, you know, what's a fun, little information about yourself? Fun fact about Matomi: Matomi's last name is Del Tori. Really? Okay. Matomi Del Tori. Guillermo Del Toro. Matomi. Oh, Winry. Okay, that is a, that is nifty. That is new information to me, the DM. <laughs> Spelled D E L T O R I. Okay, Del Tori. Anime was a mistake. Me, Emotomi Del Tori. <laughs> <laughs> She's my favorite director. Oh no! Uh, and I guess last, last, last but not least, Emerald. Or at least, uh, Emerald has a very deep-seated hatred for elections. <laughs> <laughs> oh god no let's ah! please we are in we are in our safe space here yeah where nevada can't hurt us <laughs> they couldn't hurt us they take too long to get here <laughs> god <laughs> it was like anime series you can finish before nevada finishes coming they're like oh ballots, guys guys it's, it's literally it's... just put one piece oh no oh. that's that's funny Harsh. All right. Uh, how about everybody roll me a d20? Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven. Seven. Nineteen. Twelve. Okay. Twelve. Eight. Cameron, you have to type slash roll. And then space, and then one d twenty. It's like a math equation. There you go, Matomi. You rolled a nineteen. Yeah, I did. What Here happened we three weeks ago, Killith, on Donuts and Dragons? Hey, I have extensive notes. I could recount everything. Okay, so we were down in the basement of the bathhouse. Mm -hmm. We decided to take a short rest before exploring the dungeons to find a room full of zombos. We then proceeded to kill all of them, and then Killith found a mummy nearby with moonstone eyes. Mm -hmm. And I took the two moonstones and ate magic beans! Oh fuck, that's right. Oh no. <laughs> no don't don't run with the beans. Not, not the beans. Not the beans. <laughs> We continued exploring to find Amrion's past acquaintance, whose name I didn't write down. Mortlock? Mortlock? Uh, we killed some bodies and discovered a room full of rats. Mortlock. That oh, means wait. Krieg just... What, 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 what? No, yeah, it was, what? It was Mortlock. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Mortlock. Okay, discovered a room full of rats. And then in all capital letters, I wrote, Thavius Krieg destroyed El Terrell. That was right? the big development. That, that was, was, the, big that was development. the big development that was told to you by uh, Mortlock Van Thamper, yes. son, son of a duke. And then uh, a bunch of lore that just went straight over <laughs> my head. <laughs> I may be able to supplement this. Okay. Uh, uh, I Killith drew a lot jumping, of arrows to things. Killeth jumping in with the assist. Okay. We're talking about the relations between all the people we were talking about mm -hmm. when we were talking about them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mortlock, um, his mother is Duke Van Thamper and... The Van Thampers are the ones paying the Dead Three to raise hell in the city. The Van Thampers are also friends with Fabius Krieg. They're like partners. Um, so uh, we were told by Mortlock that he believes that El Terrell fell to Avernus and that Baldur's Gate was next and that if we wanted more leads on things regarding to those, 
Um, we should seek out Amric at the Low Lantern or or uh, Thabius might also be at the Van Thamper Villa. Sorry, I like wrote that in a weird way. And then um, 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 um. Oh, uh, the other, the guy that Mortlock was like fucking up before we got there, his name was Vaz. Yes. Uh, and he was one of the, the leaders of the Dead Three, and we've Emeril fucking offed him. Um, yeah, he didn't get to do anything but walk no, forward. No, he really just kind of ran into a corner and said, Dear Lord, help. There was just <laughs> so much web. So. I love that spell. We, we pretty much finished. That was like the most information, like the biggest lead on anything in this situation that we'd gotten since mm -hmm. coming to Baldur's Gate, which was mm -hmm. really, really great. So. We learned a lot of information that you may continue. Okay. Then we found a bunch of chests, which were dragon cultist treasure. And then it had a lot of money in it, but we never divvied it up because we just came across the cult people who want the treasure back. And that's uh, where my notes specifically, cultists. specifically different cultists than the cultists you were fighting in the bathhouse. This time it's Altus. Altus. Th this time they're dragon cultists led by Altus, the cultist. <laughs> Altus, the Perfect. cultist. Uh, and you Which are right. TMI. That is actually the in-game name. Yep. And I didn't make this name up. This was a name created by Wizards of the Coast for this specific dungeon. So, I have a uh, all right, uh, I am going to activate the scene. Ooh. Oh, the lights! Ooh. Hello. I know, right? Oh, this is cool. whoa! Now, if you see these uh, these things right here, let me see what the uh... okay. Just making sure that. Uh, there's also going to be, there's like, uh, explored fog on, so even if you can't see something, you can sort of see what was there, because you, you remember. Been there before. Yes, uh, War of Fog. Now, these symbols here, those are the symbols for doors. How if do you, you activate them? Just click them. Oh, a good old left click, okay. Oh now, ev everybody stop, please. That's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of sound happening. Eric, please. I'm, I'm not doing anything anymore. Eric, I see your thing. I'm not doing anything He's anymore. really not. He's not. Get off no. my dick. <laughs> Are you lagging, Ian? I might be lagging all the clicks because there's a lot of sound that comes with it. Okay, so uh, you guys were actually probably a little bit more forward. If you guys want to set up how you guys were talking to Ultis the Cultist, because you guys pissed him oh, off. This is we're gonna be starting we with didn't a combat. Piss him off. Yeah, you did. We didn't we're starting with do combat. That with people. We're starting. We feel bad. Yeah. You, well, you guys were talking shit and then said you weren't gonna give him the treasure. I'd say I was like, uh, who's that person down there at the bottom? Uh, that would be Vendetta Cress. You don't really know her name because she is the unconscious tiefling you've been hauling uh, around. Oh, I forgot about the tiefling. She's fine. Uh, so, all right, I'll say that's where you guys were. So I am going to select everybody. Oh, God, lighting effects. <laughs> and it's then so click toggle combat state. Also, what's with the big S in the corner? Uh, that was the secret door. Ah. I, I'm, that might just... I can get rid of that. That was probably a leftover from when I imported stuff. Uh, and then I go over here. If you open up your encounter thing, you can roll your uh, initiative, please. And I will roll... Encounter thing? The, the fist. The little fist. And you can click the little die next to your name. Hey, on the right, on the right hand side. Got it. Yeah, figured, okay. I got it. And then I can click a button and roll every single cult. They're all gonna have different. Uh... That makes it a little more organic. I feel like. Uh -huh. Or I feel like it was they were just in a line. And they would just push down somebody they and say, "Hey, hey, I have a shinky uh, now." Correct. So, 
top. Well, let me uh, let me stop this investigation music. It's not as not as raucous as I require it to be. Let's raucous it up, guys. Raucous Maximus. The raucous has occurred. Uh, this guy, which one are you? You're over here. Uh, he is going to. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh no, that would. Okay, I'll just do that. He will do that. Isn't this wonderful? Uh, and then his abilities. I will attack you, Killeth. Oh, with a scimitar. They're Clip. centaurs. Scimitar. <laughs> you know he pulls this. He pulls a whole Is centaur out of his bag and just whacks <laughs> you with it. Uh, and horse attack. A normal attack. Does a ten hit you? No, it does not. Okay, that is his turn. His whole turn. He's he is a he, guys. You fought dragon cultists. <laughs> no. When we were level five. We systematically <laughs> executed dragon cultists. I was about to say that. Say fought is a generous word. All right. Yeah. And then stole their foosball table. That's definitely true. Damn, yeah, oh. remember what she promised to do there? Yeah, well, it's too late because I think I think he made it made it so that we couldn't do that. Uh, okay. Uh, scimitar attack on you, Emerald. Uh, which is going to be a twenty-one to hit. Uh, just a normal hit. Cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I can just apply the damage, I think. I already put it on. Oh, like, oh wait, it didn't take. No. Did you? What did you do? Uh, did, for my own little thing. You started at. Did there you start? We go. Okay. We're getting used to it. Okay. Uh, am I, I could supposed have... to be able to see like his health points or? Whose health points? Eric's. Yeah, I guess. I don't. See I can't. Him. I don't see anything. I'm not seeing anything on my end either. Oh, then no, you're not supposed to. It's only for him to know and for me to know. Okay. Unless he tells you. Uh, Matomi, you are next. Emerald, you are on deck. Holler, holler, get dollar. Do do I do I roll? Uh, yeah, well, what you, are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, okay. Uh, this guy right here. Uh, do you see uh -huh. him? That I've selected? Okay. I, uh, before that, how deep is this tub? Uh, it's, oh, no. you know, it's enough to submerge a person. Uh, not Yay! so... Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> I want to pick him up by the neck <laughs> and bring him over to the bathtub and drown him. It's not been five minutes! Oh, it's not been five minutes! Hey, hey, okay, alright, alright. Uh, give me... Alright, here's what we're gonna say. This is gonna require all of your attacks. The first okay. attack is gonna be a grapple, so it's going to be your athletics check versus either my acrobatics or athletics, depending on what I choose. And, uh... I choose uh, I, I choose acrobatics. For for me to roll? No, you choose athletics. You have to roll athletics. I have to okay. roll uh, whatever I want, either acrobatics or athletics. Oh dear. Uh, Matomi, what did you roll? Sixteen. Uh, yeah, I rolled an eight. He is grappled. Okay. Uh, and then you can use your second attack to um, move him into the tub. Okay. 
Uh, and I guess another strength check to see if okay. you can push him under the water. Is that athletics? Uh, yeah, that'll be athletics, and I will I will again contest that. The same thing. It's a sixteen. Okay. Uh, I got I got a sixteen. So oh, you move him. Uh, I will move him for you. You move him into the tub, but uh, as you're like trying to sh struggle to push him into the water itself, he, seeing what you're trying to do, begins reacting violently and struggling against you, and he manages to stay above the water. Do you have a bonus action you'd like to use? Yeah, I want to spit on his eye. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you spit on his eye and it is disgusting. He's like, oh my god! Oh, what the... Uh, Emeril. <laughs> Emerion, you are on deck. Um, in the interest of helping Makomi, I'm gonna disengage. Babe? What, what? What? Hello? Yeah? Can... Oh, I, th I thought you could hear me. Um, in the interest of helping Matomi, I'm going to disengage so that this man can't hit me. Okay. Um, five, ten. Uh, how can I assist with pushing this person underwater? Uh, you can use your action, and it will be another... Uh, it'll be a strength check versus my acrobatics or strength. Or, if oh. you want, you can just use the help action, and Matomi would have advantage on her turn. Oh yeah, I'll use the help. Okay. God, you guys are scary. You guys are scary. <laughs> this combat starts and Matomi's alright, alright, I'm gonna drown the fuck this out of you. the question, are we the bad guys? Or actually, actually, <laughs> no, we're, we're the good guys. Actually, um, I'm gonna ready an action. Okay, so in that case, Matomi won't be helped by you. Correct. Okay, what are you readying? Uh, as soon as he goes underwater, I'm going to use the immovable rod to hold him there. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we're the villains. Yeah, we're the bad guys. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, that's doable. Hold on, hold on. Hold, my internet just died as Eric's turn was happening. What happened? He's on, 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 once you okay. push the guy in the water, he went to push the, the he, rod. yeah, he's setting himself up to immovable rod the guy once you shove him underwater. So he can't <gasps> get back up. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. Next turn, Amrian. Well, I think I'll just go for the good old-fashioned vi ultra-violence here. Mm-hmm. I think the guy in front of Kill through old hands, so I'm going to shoot this guy that was talking crap to us. Ah, uh, yes. Poor Ultus. Don't pity the man. His name is stupid. Okay, and then hit the uh, attack. Okay. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, that's a nine to hit. Wow, that's a lot of things. You rolled a two. Oh, the two crew. Unfortunately, that does not hit Ultis the Cultist. Okay, and I do think I have my cannon out still, because we just came from a major fight. Uh, I yeah. did have the cannon out. Okay. So my force cannon will go off. Okay, uh, roll to hit again. Oh that boy, not worth the way that, did, that did not work the way that. Okay, uh, just roll some dice if you want, or roll a d20. Uh, I don't have that functionality set up yet, I guess. Or it's. Mm. There's probably a module for that. Yeah, or we can figure out how to add it in in his thing. Uh, 15 to hit, uh, Mr. Yes, that no, no, okay. it does not hit. I'm so sorry. Does not so, hit. No, it pops out of your hat and it shoots over at Ultis and it streaks past Ultis and hits, uh, hits the wall behind him. Uh, and Ultis is standing there. Uh, all these cultists are holding like sharp knives and scimitars. Uh, Ultis is, uh, has a staff. Like and a, I'm gonna uh, go oh. back and since I'm small, Take cover behind the hot tub. Yeah, sure. You can uh, you can take cover. I mean, it won't be hard. Why is everything black? I just hid. I, I, you're hidden. Sorry, I was hiding you. Um. Okay, that's Amrian's turn. 
It's gonna be this cultist turn. Uh, Killeth, you are on deck. Goddamn, Ultis, you rolled like shit. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to hit. I did not mean to close that door. So sorry. Uh. Okay. Takes an opportunity. Uh, yes, Matomi. If you if you would like, uh, you can make a uh, opportunity attack against a cultist that just ran past you. However, it would be a disadvantage because you are grappling uh, the other cultist and trying to push him underwater. Hi, welcome to Technical Problems. Oh, no. uh, we'll be right back after this short problem. I'm in. Okay. Yay. Hacker man. Okay. So, back to the cultist's turn. It's going to attack uh, Killith. Did with... Matomi want to do her opportunity attack? Oh, right. Does Matomi want to do an opportunity attack? For which cultist? There is a cultist that ran past you and is now behind uh, Killith. Yeah. Yes, I want to do an opportunity attack. It's going to be with disadvantage because you are grappling the other one in the tub. Absolutely. That's totally fine with me. Might as well try. Well, not one. Uh, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Just kind of looks in his direction as he runs by. She okay, uh, I'm going to attack with advantage. Uh, 18 to hit Killeth. That hits. Okay, uh, roll that normal damage. Seven damage from this cultist. I'm going to select. Uh, don't put it on. I can I can apply damage. I'll let you do it. Unless you tell me otherwise, I'm leaving you to do it. Okay, I applied the damage. So now you should be at 23 out of 67. Okay, and that is that cultist's turn, making it kill if your turn. Okay, um, I... Okay, so... Okay. Uh, I'm going to move here. And I have a thing that I mentioned last time, but didn't apply because it didn't happen. But I have something called Escape the Horde. All opportunity attacks against me are made with disadvantage. Okay, so that's going to be two opportunity attacks. Both with disadvantage. Uh, both with disadvantage. However, because they were flanking you, they would have advantage. So it would just be a straight roll. If I moved out of... Well, you, well, the, the attack happens when you start moving. Oh. So you'd technically maybe. still be in this space. I, so their advantage because of flanking okay. would be canceled so. by your horde breaker. So I'm going to attack twice. A normal roll. Uh, that's a 10 to hit and a 9 to hit. So both, both miss. miss. Yeah. And then... I'm going to use my longbow. Okay, and how do I do this again? I have it in my hotbar. Do I just click on the thing? You should just click on the thing. Okay. And it should pop thing. up in it pops up in chat. Okay. And then uh, roll hit to attack. And uh, you let me know which one you're you're hitting. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can d uh, double right click and it'll target the guy you're do you want to hit. And I will see your dot on one of the guys, so Double I know which right one. Click? Double right click. Okay. 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 So that. that guy, I see. And then I hit attack. Yep. And then I don't have a situational bonus. Correct. That's like if you want to add a D4 for bless okay. or something like that. Okay. So that you just. Or if I added my OK firearm. So it exactly. should just be the normal what it is. Yes. Okay. You got a 17 that does hit. Now, I don't know if this has been configured properly for your actual damage, so we're going to see. Hit the damage button. Damage. 1d8 
And then another D8, yeah. Okay. Okay, so there's two D8s in there. Yep, cool. then that's perfect. Perfect. Uh, and then I'm going to target him and then apply the damage. And then, uh, which guy is this? It's that man. That man. That man is oh. dead. Okay, cool. And what's um, it look like? Uh, <laughs> What's it look like, Killeth? So you you run past these guys who swing wildly at you. They look like they, stick they dodging moves. can't see very well because of how dark it is. Cool. Um, and then you just turn around real quick and fire a shot quickly and just skewer this man. Yeah. Uh, you have a second attack, do you not? I do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this guy. Okay. With the same bow. And can I just do the same since- Yeah, I just hit attack it. again. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you need to hit it every time. Okay. Ooh. Ah, that's, uh, that's a natural one. That was not good. Uh, so that is going to go wide. Uh, that is going to be your turn though, yes? Yes. That's going to- select the dude? Uh, just left click in, uh, okay, oh. Okay, no, I, I just double right clicked again on the same- Yes. That is going to bring us to Ultis, the cultist. Uh, he takes a fighting stance with his um, staff, and he is going to... Uh, who, what is he going to do? Uh, he's going to go at least 25. Huh. Uh, he's gonna go right here. Uh, he's carrying a torch. He glowing. And uh, he gets over here, and he's going to make an attack. Uh, oh boy, I've got a lot on this guy. I sort of homebrewed this guy like yesterday, so. It's okay. Take your time. It's okay, Rocky. You go when you want to. Uh, he is going to use his first attack to hit Matomi. No. With his quarter staff. Bring it on. Uh, 19 to hit. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's he's doing it one handed, so you take uh, eight damage. Okay. Uh, actually, he is going to gonna use one of his special features. Special features. Where is it? Um. Okay. Yes. Uh, he is. Oh no, he can't do it with his. Uh, Quarter staff. That's fine. So that was his first attack, and he's going to use. Oh, I got very, uh, very into it. Uh, he's going to use a key point to do Ooh. stunning strike on Matomi. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Twenty, not net. Unfortunately, that does save. Uh, and then he's going to use his second attack. He's going to punch you with his fist. So it comes down hard on your head with a quarter staff. Uh, then he's going to punch you with the opposite hand. Uh, that's a dirty twenty. Yeah. Uh, doing nine points, but as you watch. His fist is coming up at you, and you watch as it moves through the air. It builds up this, like, aura of red fire until when it finally connects with you, uh, it does nine fire damage. Is he doing it with his foot? Uh, 
Because he was holding the. Is that torch. another nine? I'm confused. Okay. Yes. Yes. He would be uh, doing it with his. Uh, oh. His okay. yeah. Uh, that's going to be nine fire damage. But it says bludgeoning damage. Yes. It's a special ability of his. Oh, fire feet. Like he, he can uh, actually he can just change it to any any damage he wants that's dragon related. Okay, got then it. Then he's going to use his bonus action to. Huh, what is he going to do? He's going to do flurry of blows, so two more attacks against Matomi. Uh, so he's going to spend a key point to do that. Um. Then, uh, so, unarmed strike, uh, 16 to hit? No. Okay, 16 misses, and then the second fist is, so he kicks, and then he kicks with the other leg, and then, uh, shoulder checks you. Uh, but unfortunately, the kick, the second kick and the shoulder check both miss horribly, uh, and Ultis just kind of grins up at you, um... And that is going to be Ultus's turn. Feyre. Okay. With a roll of four. All right, I'm looking. Um, pull down the finger of God yeah. if you wanted to. There isn't like a list of my, oh, is it an inventory? With the actions? Or is it in... What are you talking about? Uh, for your actions, go to features. Feature? Features? Okay. So sorry, we're still learning. <sighs> features, or if you're trying to do a spell, as in just look at your, your spell, spell book. book. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted to do inflict wounds at first yeah, level. That would be in your spell book. Okay. Spell. Pack. Normal. A 17. And you're attacking Ooh. the guy right next to you? Yes. That does hit. Uh, hit the damage button. Oof, oof, oof. Uh, 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 uh. I need to figure out which cultist this is. Yes. Favorite, what's it look like, your, your, uh, inflict wounds? Um, it looks like I'm literally, like, taking his soul essence and then just like like drawing it out of him and then like clenching it in my fist to snuff it out lovely um that's the scariest thing <laughs> i've ever heard that's did i mention your hair looks yeah. great today uh, did, uh, i'm sorry do you have a uh, a bonus action or something uh no okay so it's going to go to this cultist guy who's been like outside this whole time and has watched all of his friends just get murdered in inside. <laughs> uh, Guys, I don't think this is a good idea. He's watched them simply pass away. Uh, okay. He's going to go here and he's going to attack Matomi with his uh, scimitar. Uh with advantage because of uh ultis warding flare. huh I do warding flare okay warding flare that gives disadvantage uh or yeah. do i have to uh do something first gosh i don't remember uh it doesn't say on here it would be under features or you can always look at D, &D beyond i'm not i'm not afraid of you using D, &D beyond I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid. I'm not. Af I'm not afraid. Okay. Uh, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the light on the attack roll. Okay. Then uh, instead of advantage, it's gonna have uh, re just a regular attack <laughs> because of your disadvantage. 
Uh, normal roll. 17 to hit Matomi. Mm. Meats. Meats. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then you take two points of slashing damage. I will apply it to your character. Beep. I'm at 48 out of 67. You're fine. I know, I'm just telling Ian. I totally agree, I'm fine too. You're at 48 out of 67? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, That is going to be the top of the round with the cultist back here. He is not in a good spot. He's going to stab at Emerald. He's going to stab Emerald. Um, I'm just oh, no. <laughs> he's not going to stab Emerald. He's grappled and in uh, a bad way, actually. He's going to try to get the fuck out. Uh, he's going to use his... Um, give me a... Give me a... Sh- what was your strength check to hold him in last time? Or just con- contested strength roll. Give me strength and I'll do dex. Uh, Matomi. Oh, no. You said strength? Yes. So is that athletics? I'm confused. Yes, yes. And give me an athletics oh. check. 16. Cool. I rolled a 9, so he's still in the tub. Okay. Uh, and I guess he's going to attack you with disadvantage. I'm confused. How is he able to attack when he has a bar over his head underwater? He's not underwater. You yet. haven't pushed him underwater. I thought Eric dropped That's, the. Uh... Eric is holding his action, waiting for you to push him underwater. Gotcha. Okay, so. Which he's hasn't above happened water. yet. Uh, he rolled a four on his disadvantage attack. And that is his turn. Matomi. Yeah. It is your turn. Are you holding him underwater? Y- yes. Okay, I'm gonna make uh, one last deck save for him, and you give me that that strength, that athletics check. Okay. That strength roll. That strength roll. Oh man. You tell me. Nineteen. I rolled a ten. He is pushed underwater. The moment his head goes uh, under the water, uh, y- Emerald, you jump in with the immovable rod and you stick it right on his chest so that he can't come back up. Yep. Uh, Dark. Uh, awesome. He immediately starts to drown. Uh, cause he, he, he didn't think to use this action to take a gulp of air. Uh, that's gonna be Emerald's turn. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Matoma, do you have a bonus action you'd like to do? No. Okay. Uh, okay. so then, yes, Emerald. Amrian, you uh, are on deck. I'm a hit dis- I'm gonna hit, uh, Ultis. Okay, yeah, roll to hit. So, how do I- do I, I I roll with the dragon bone first and then use sneak attack? Uh, yes. Okay, because it's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know. Attack. Um. And then hit the attack button. Okay. And just normal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's not an advantage. 17 to hit. He, that does hit Ultus. Okay. So, so then hit. You, you hit the damage button and then t- do that damage and then hit sneak attack. Okay. 11. So 11 damage. Oof. Oof, Oof indeed. And, and, and nine that's... sneak attack. That's shitty sneak attack. That's but so, so bad. Okay. Uh, he did not like that too much. Not uh... a fan. Bonus action, sep- uh, second uh, uh, dual weapon fighting. Okay. So I'll hit him with Zidag. Uh, how do I? 
Wait, let me see if I can go into this and... What are you trying it, to do? Uh, is, oh, do it without... I uh, roll it with a plus. Just do uh, slash the, roll and then 1d20. Yeah, you could just do that. Uh, it's minus... It's for just for damage, though. Your attack stays the same. Okay, so I'll roll to hit then. And then, so that's a 16. That just hits Col uh, Ultis. Cultist the Ultis. Ultis the Cultist. Okay, so now what do I do for this? Uh, roll 1d4. Because it's just a dagger, right? Or you uh, can hit the attack button and I can look at what number you ro is rolled. And yeah, I'll, just, I'll just... I'll just do damage and blop. Uh, you rolled a four on your d4, so Hell that's yeah. how much damage is going to be done to Ultis. He is unhappy with what has occurred. So you you uh, you do some damage. You stab him twice uh, in the gut, and Ultis is like, "Come on! I just got this dry cleaned." I think we were going to challenge you to foosball. Well. I would not have accepted. You have no idea how mad Archon got the last time we did that. <laughs> uh, bonus action? That was uh, my bonus action. Right. Uh, Amrian. Kill if you're on deck. Well, you should have took... You should have took the foosball. Oh, no, Ultus. Oh, no, Ultus, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Don't do this to me. No. What is up? God, why? Why? Ooh, uh, so you, uh, it goes wide and like kind of arcs right over his hooded head and hits the water and sizzles. Uh, and the guy in the water is like, oh God, oh! Uh, under the water. <laughs> Uh, bonus action, Amrian? Uh, bonus action, force cannon goes off. Okay. Your, hat, hit, right? your hat pops up and uh, Ultis like, is looking at you like kind of, you know, laughing a little bit at how the firebolt went over his head and you get him square in the chest with this hit. So yes, that does hit. Uh, it, he won't get pushed five feet back. It's impossible for him to get pushed five feet back. Uh, Ultis takes nine, nine points damage. of damage. Uh, I maybe should have given him more health. That's what I'm considering. Pish posh. A uh, bit, bit late for that. Uh, Killith. Okay. I'm going to move here by this corpse of this person. Oh. Oh, wow, well, actually, I'm going to move here instead. And uh, I am going to do my first attack on this guy. Okay. Because I don't like, I don't, he looks funny. I don't like He him. looks funny. Okay. He looks yeah, funny. He, he's looking at you and you realize he's got one eye on you and one eye on Ultis. He's got a funny look. I don't he's like. He's got it. a funny look. His one eye is just not a. It's they're. He's got it's that chameleon not eye. To me, I think it's weird. Okay. And that's gonna be with my bow. Ooh, yeah. Dirty twenty is going to hit. Oh. Eight bad. damage. Okay. Wow. That was. Okay. That is pretty bad. Okay. Uh, then, but then Hordebreaker goes off. Well, he's not within five feet of anybody. He's within five do. feet of the guy who is drowning. Is he? He's yeah. the guy drowning oh, is right me, here. He's like between tiles. Oh. Because for me, he's like right here. What? Yeah, that's oh no he like he's it. directly next to matomi oh okay well if that's the case let me I, I will i will move him okay, okay. yeah no oh there you go okay now it makes much more sense that's where he is okay um should so I, like, I drown or like 
You're gonna put him out of misery, or are you gonna let him drown? I'll let him die drown. anyway. Yeah, he's okay. gonna die anyway. Uh, then your second attack, then. Um, I'll just attack the same guy again. Okay. Roll to hit. You can just hit the attack button again. 19. Uh, describe his death. Um... He had one HP left. One, he had one HP one, left. One of the... The first arrow goes in the eye that was looking at me, and the second arrow goes in the eye that was looking at Ultis. Oh, no. That poor man. And then he the, just and, falls backwards on the ground, and he's got two arrows sticking out of his eyes. Yeah, and you realize that they are at very different angles. They're like, they're looking east and west. It's they are not looking. wicked crazy. Uh, and that, actually, you still have Horde Breaker. You could use it on... Uh, he's just going to drown. I'm just going to let okay. him drown. Uh, and that ends your turn? Bo or yeah. bonus action? Uh, my cape billows in the breeze. Your breeze. cape billows. Uh, it smacks some things. Is now Ultis's turn. Ultis is not happy with uh, what is happening. He is going to... Um... He is going to use one of his key points to take Step of the Wind. Uh, bonus action, disengage. Uh, he's going to step back here. Uh, and then... Oh, oh. Actually, when he uses uh, Step of the Wind, you watch as uh, he, like, holds his hands together and just breathes in deeply. And as he breathes out, you watch a pair of spectral draconic wings unfurls from behind his back, and he begins uh, hovering. Uh, and then he is going to... Uh, there is something he's gonna do. I just need to find it. Uh, yes, there you go. If you take the attack action, you replace one of your attacks. Okay, so she is going to... Uh, he's going to use his first attack and cast... He's gonna breathe in deeply and breathe out in a 20-foot cone. Uh, I need... Uh, let me make that cone, because I can do that. A 20-foot cone. Okay. Uh, and, oh, can I not rotate that? That's dumb. Oh, can I? That's cool. It shows the squares oh. that it affects. That's really cool. Okay, you can rotate something that's already been set by holding, selecting it, holding control, and using your uh, mouse wheel. Okay. Uh, oh, so kind of like your token. Yes. Okay. Uh, is he going to do that against you guys? No, he's going to do this against Killeth and... Well... Fuck it. No, he's going to do it again. Uh, I need... Um, Matomi and Emerald to make dexterity saving throw. Constitution? Let me check. Uh, I need you to what make you dexterity. Me? Dexterity saving throws! And I'm gonna do one... <laughs> final answer. Uh, final answer. And I'm gonna do one for Vendetta, who automatically fails because she is unconscious. And for... Did you get cover from it from being behind the bathtub? Uh, yeah. I'll let her take half damage because she's behind the bathtub. Uh, you save and uh, killeth. I'm sorry, Matomi. Like, I am not in that. I am not involved. Uh, Matomi got an eight. Mm hmm. Okay, and then uh, this uh, this poor cultist got a six. Because Ultis is does not give a shit. He's going to do two d six uh, acid damage. I yell up uh, Matomi. Hey, you should probably dodge that blast of genius plus four. Uh, uh, 8 plus 4, it would be 12, which unfortunately is not enough to Oh, well, dodge. I tried. That's fine. Bring it on. I can uh, take it. Okay, so everybody... So, Emerald saved, so you take 5 damage, five acid damage. But Tommy, Me? Uh, you take 10 oh. acid damage. Okay. Um, the cultist did not save. Uh... <laughs> 
So as he's drowning, he just feels acid begin raining down on him, uh, and he dies. He was not having a good day from the start. Uh, Vendetta, uh, Vendetta, unfortunately, uh, I will be nice and say that she's unconscious. No, unfortunately, she was dirty as. No, unfortunately, it outright kills her. Oh, we tried. She has four health and failed, so that's over double. Four health? I thought we gave her a health potion. No, she's... No, she, she was at zero, dude. She's a commoner. Oh. I thought we healed her, but she was, like, she remained unconscious. No, she's just, she's a commoner, so she is dead now. Okay. So sorry. Uh, and that is Ultis's first attack. Uh, let me get rid of this breath weapon thing. Then, oh, what is he going to do? He's going to step back this way. Uh, actually, fuck it. He's going to... Nah, uh, he'll stay here and he's going to kick Am uh, Amrian. Oh, boy. Boarding. Uh, 18 to hit. Miss. 18 misses? My is 20, dude. Okay, uh, he already used his bonus action to step of the wind, so that's his turn. Feyre. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I'm out of first level, but second level, wait, okay. I have one third level, but I need to keep that. I'll just do Sacred Flame on him. So do you have to click on the saving save oh, throw? Oh, yes. I will have to do that. On Ultis? Yes. Okay. Uh, I rolled a <laughs> one. I rolled a one. So then you Is hit damage. Hit no, it's just a normal hit. You don't do crits on saving throws. Uh, eight damage to Ultis. Uh, he is not looking good, guys. I probably should have made him higher than level six. Okay. I, I'm trying out that new monk subclass. That's what I thought you were doing. Mm-hmm. I believe it is Motome's turn. Yes, top of the round, Motome. Motome. The man in the... So you put this guy to drown, but before he could drown, his skin was melted off by all of the acid. So Forget about it. Fun. And now that's he's... Okay. Now, now Now it's man soup. Yeah, there's a, just... there's a lot of... That's an interesting kind of soup. He was just I'm gonna... gonna... I'm gonna eye Cultus. Nostrils flared, shoulders back. Great sword drawn. Uh oh. Uh oh. And I wanna whack him. Oh no, are you gonna whack him? Oh whack him. Whack him. Twenty-four. To hit? Yeah. Yeah, that hits. Ten damage. Matomi, how yeah. do you want to do this? <gasps> uh, where's Tiamat? <laughs> where's Tiamat now, you bitch? And then I just like to capture him. Oh, oh my god! Jesus. Uh, and and before he can say anything to that terrible burn, his head is uh no longer attached to his body and he falls forward and this bathhouse is well now a blood bathhouse it's not great it's not great as well Jack Black. Decapitation! Decapitation! <clears throat> did what he would... have anything on his person uh you there's he has a normal quarter him. he has a quarter staff uh he has Uh, 50 Warping. gold. He has 50 gold uh, on him. 
to retrieve my my rod of Im immovability. Yeah. Do you click the button? Um, you wipe how, away how, how, some of the skin that had adhered to it from when the acid turned it bubbly. How soupy is this man on a level of from like man to Breaking Half, Bad soup? Halfway Breaking Bad soup. Ugh. Like it's it's um night of the living dead soup or no oh. return of the living dead soup you know when they they have that like barrel that they plop open and there's like a soupy man yeah, yeah. that soupy that man. Soup, soup man <laughs> the anti soup Nazi uh, it's like three in the morning the bathhouse opens in maybe four hours what would you guys like to do. Uh, let's babush. Let's let the cleanup leave. people deal with it later. <clears throat> okay. Let's leave. Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> in that case, let me open up the Baldur's Gate map. Jeez, uh, it! The fuzz are on their way. <laughs> the fuzz. Can we go back <laughs> to our hotel? Did we even have a hotel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh God! So, I'm in the outskirts. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are are on. Actually, you know what? I said it was 3 a.m., guys. So let me adjust the scene. Ooh, it's all dark. <laughs> Hooray, Patrick. We're finally giant. <laughs> <laughs> Wumbo. <laughs> wow, the new season of Attack on Titan looks great. Da, 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 uh, I'm, da, I'm probably going to fill this up a little bit more, um, but I, I just put lights at the locations you've been to. Oh, that's nice. Um, little aesthetics. Oh, aesthetics. I so you guys what are. That circle was. At the that was the mermaid statue oh, that uh, okay, where the pigeon. Blew up. Told me to the bird. Yep. Um. Okay, you guys can go to the Elf Song Tavern if you guys would like to sleep the night. Or yes, uh, please. Is there, Long rest box? is there a post box I can find along the way? Uh, is there a post box? Uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, we just lost power. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, uh, the power just left and came back, so uh, I guess we'll be back once our internet comes back. Yay! We are back from break in the beautiful city of Baldur's Gate with so many lights and so many places. Before we were rudely destroyed by the internet and the power, Emerald was looking for something. Yes. Oh, uh, let me delete all this stuff from Emerald. Uh, Amrian. You are the 24 in your perception check. Um, as you're walking back to the Elf Song Tavern, you do, you do find, like, it's like a little booth uh, that says mail on it, and there's a there is a guy in the booth. Okay, uh, I'm gonna walk up to him, pull out letters. It's like I'd like to send this, please. Absolutely, sir. Where would you like to send this? Uh, town of Fandolin. Oh, the town of Fandolin. All right, let me uh look up uh, on the old map. It's not on this map. Uh. Let me look. No, it's not on this map. Do you know uh, what region it's uh, Fandolin's in? Uh, it's up the. It's uh, farther up the coast, nearby the. What is it called the Sword Mountains? Uh, yeah, uh, the Sword Mountains uh, over by Neverwinter, eh? Correct. It's a little All bit. Right. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong map. Then give me one second. And he starts pulling out another map. Ah, Fandolin, Fandolin. All right. So you're sending a letter. Uh, to Fandolin. Okay, let me uh, calculate those costs for you. Uh, this is gonna take a second. Uh, services, postage costs, letter. It's gonna. Uh, it's gonna be a uh, copper piece per. Uh, uh, see here just like to adjust his glasses in the dark so he's like he's adjusting himself um is a letter or a package just a letter just a letter that's gonna be a copper piece per day of travel 
Uh, let me uh, calculate what that would be. Uh huh. There's gonna be it's gonna be a lot. I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. Okay. Uh, don't just don't be afraid. I'm in Baldur's Gate. I wouldn't be here if I was afraid. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. Now they're gonna. Unfortunately, we're gonna be taking a less traveled way uh, north of Baldur's Gate. Normally, our uh, caravans uh, head out east uh, along the Chionthar River, go through uh, El Torel, and go north from Scornobel. But uh, we're gonna have to take a less traveled route through the Fields of the Dead. Uh, it Why will, is that? Because El Torel's gone. Uh, well. You go buy what used to be El Terrell. We uh, we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least he's honest. Oh, uh, yeah. we don't want to. Uh, <laughs> and he, he's he's done like he he had pulled out like this severally. It's like a ruler that folds in several different places, so he can lay out an exact route. Um, and he traces it out on the map. Um. Should be about 940 miles to Fandolin. That'll take, he does some math in his head, 42 days uh, on foot. Okay. So uh, that'll be 42 copper or uh, uh, four silver, two copper. I, I'll just flip him four silver and two copper. Ah, oh, thank you kindly, thank you kindly. Uh, we will uh, deliver this. Uh, can I have the name of uh, who this is being delivered to? Darren Edermath. All right, Darren Edermath. Oh my god. Wrote that down. Uh, all right, we will send that letter out. Oh my post -haste. god. <laughs> Took you a while. I just, I just have a bit of drink come out of my nose. <laughs> I now have a permanent red mark in the shape of my palm on my forehead. <laughs> Sorry. Isn't that the man? He had a pizza. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, that letter will be sent out tomorrow morning. Okay. Once, uh, once the courier horses are unlocked. Uh, here is your receipt, and he hands you a small scrap of paper that says uh, "letter to Fandolin, forty-two copper, paid in full." Okay. And uh, I will send you the letter once we are done with tonight's session. Uh, sure. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to look out for while you head to the Elf Song Tavern? Or are we calling it an evening? I am good. I don't know about everybody else. Tell me why I almost said prostitutes. Uh... It's very unbecoming of you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you tell I, me. I had one thing when we get to the tavern, but, no. Okay. Hmm. This pizza is great. What type? Um, barbecue chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, thin crust barbecue yeah. chicken. Oh, you had me at thin crust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you had me at barbecue. Yeah, yeah. You had me at pizza. <laughs> I told yeah, you. Yeah, so pizza. instead of marinara sauce, it's barbecue sauces. So you guys make your way through okay. the city, uh, down the different uh, roadways that will take you to Elf Song Tavern. You make it there, um, you know, things are as you left it. There's a couple, it's a little rowdy, not super rowdy, but you know, it's a little rowdy. And did we hate to see anyone get stabbed on our way there? Uh, give me a, uh, give me a d20. Roll a d20. Oh, sure. I rolled an 11. Hmm. Not that you saw. <laughs> Nobody that mattered. We don't know that. But you make it to Elf Song Tavern. Uh, it is beautiful and glorious. What would you guys like to do? Take a long rest. Can I go to bed, please? Um, uh, Fairy, you wanted to do something? Yes. So... <laughs> Feyre is going to uh, excuse herself and uh, go take 
probably an hour long bath. Oh no! Wow. With all of her rose soap and smelly <laughs> good stuff, <laughs> in the bath. It's going to be luxurious and glorious with candles and it, yeah. It's and yeah. She just uses every single smell all of the Yes, a, a, yes. Uh, she's using every smell. Oh no. She's gonna smell like Bath and Body Works. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Smell like a Lush store. That is what happens. Um, you are you're you're told where to go for a bath, and uh, Clank. I think his name is Clank. Let me make sure. The, uh, uh, where is it? I think it's Clank. Yes, his name is Clank. Uh, uh, Clank stays at the door uh, while a half ogre uh, brings you a uh, several buckets of, of hot water. And they fill the hot water bath up for you. And you you have a bath for an hour. Oh, it is glorious. I tip, I tip him a couple of copper pieces just to leave me alone. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and and the uh, half ogre leaves you alone. So in the bath. Oh boy, this is going she's different going directions. To... No, no, no. She's gonna meditate. <laughs> And try and commune with uh, her guardian spirit. <laughs> Just oh. to let her know that she's, she's following the signs and doing what she's supposed to do and... and, and Using a bunch of bath yeah. soap. Yes. Doing, doing Sune's work by becoming beautiful. Uh, give me a religion check. Okay. Religion plus three. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> so, uh, you are relaxing. The water is steaming hot. It smells like this mismatch of, like, lavender soaps and, uh, like, a special... Uh, patchouli oil uh, mixes with the water um, with bubbly stuff that uh, you're not quite sure what the scent is from. And you you settle yourself down into the bath and, you know, after a little bit, you know, you see lots of dirt and scum sort of float to the top of the water and you're just you're vibing and you're vibing and Oh no. Shit, do I fall asleep? <laughs> Uh, you fall asleep. No! <laughs> as you as you meditate, you're like breathing in, and the stress of the day, uh, wash like everything comes does washing fall down. Asleep or does she pass out from the fumes? Uh, she she <laughs> falls she falls asleep. Uh, she will be wrinkly as fuck in the morning. Ooh. No, that's the opposite of what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Thy name is Prune. <laughs> Um, is there anything else anyone would like to do, or should we long rest? Matori is gonna sharpen her greatsword and then go to bed. Okay. Uh, before oh, everyone... Did. Yes. There was one thing that I did want to do before we the left the bathhouse. Okay. Which was, um, Vendetta Cress, the tiefling girl. Uh-huh. I wanted to at least like move her away from the bodies and like put her like on a towel and like cover her body and like put like a couple of rose petals on her. Show show her a little uh, respect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that was the only. Thing. You, you move her off to the side uh, earlier and you cover her up and you like do the thing where you lean lean down and you close her eyes with your with two <laughs> fingers. Yeah. Um, she like partially dissolved. Yeah, yeah, there was an acid. There was <laughs> there was for. acid. Cover it up. Uh, there was acid involved. Oops. Oops. Um, before a long rest can be taken, everybody is settling down in the rooms. Who's with who? You guys got a girl's room and a guy's room. I believe. Uh, that was just like one giant room. 
Oh, was it I one giant know. room? I thought you told me you wanted a guy's and a girl's room. I thought it was one was it? because one one big bed. One big bed. Yeah, one big bed. One, one big room. bed. One, one big bed. One big bed. Okay. Wait, does Feyre ever come out of the bathtub? <laughs> or does she just stay in there all night? Well, actually, I, well, I was going to do this in the morning, but I guess... Well, because I was going to take a bath in the morning, but I guess I'll take a bath before I go to bed. Is the uh, door still locked? Uh, the door is locked. So, oh, so anyone that needs to get in is barred from entry. Yeah, for hours on end. <laughs> Well, that's a problem because Matomi's bladder is bigger than you know everybody oh, else. Big, bigger it's, than uh, the bath, the bathroom is just a bath. You have to go to the uh, outhouse for outhouse. that. Gotcha. Okay, thank God. You think these places have plumbing? <laughs> uh, they do, but you know, not indoor plumbing. That's where you. They have outhouses that drop directly into the sewer. <laughs> Great. Um, you guys are settling down in your big, big bed. Um, Amrian is asleep, I assume. Atomi, you all go to sleep. Uh, Emerald, you dream. And I need you to come with me into the secret channel. God damn it, I never get fun dreams. <laughs> in front of no. his daughters and his daughters were so embarrassed and it was so hilarious it's iconic what the hell did i just yeah. jump into well while know. you were off in la la land wait, having wait. fun annie did you see the video of obama doing the three-pointer left-handed mm -hmm. no classic uh, no i'll have to look that one up and he's walking away he's like that's what i do that's what yeah. i do yeah that was good that was good and people are like he just because he's the president doesn't mean he don't he still don't got it. <laughs> I mean, isn't there a isn't there a basketball court at the White House? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Okay, oh, probably. So, so Sorry. anyway, you may all take a long rest. Okay. Finally, <laughs> you said finally. We were waiting seven minutes while you, you um, and Ian had seven minutes in heaven over there. And uh, the morning, the morning comes. There we go. I have taken long rest. So have I. Pharaoh wakes up in ice cold water. <laughs> in ice cold Super water. Oh, no. All the prune. All the Tilly prune. wakes up feeling still very grimy because she couldn't take a fucking bath the previous day. Mm. Wait, we don't get back all the hit dice? Huh? You get back to half your hit dice on a long rest. Oh, really? Oh, oh, I didn't know. know. Did you get back? Oh. Then he shoots magic missile. <laughs> no, that's recovering. It's recovering it. Oh. Since it's dawn, I get I get five charges back. Dawn on the meant, final day. I thought that meant like you fire five magic missiles. <laughs> five of them all. Okay. Ah. It is the morning. The smells of eggs and bacon and sausage waft up from the ground floor of the Elf Song Tavern. Uh, the sound of many of the patrons, um, you know, echo throughout the building. It is the morning. What would you like to do, Droop Troop? Take a bath, please. <laughs> uh, you take a bath. There is a rim of, like, just a a scum ring around the top of the as I, bath. As I enter, okay, as I enter the bathroom and I close the door behind me, you know, like with my ch like clean change of like clothes and the towel around me. And I'm just like, I just look at the state of the bathtub and I just go, oh my God. <laughs> Does it still smell in there? Uh, yeah, it's, it smells of like lavender and like is that strawberry? Like my eyes start watering the longer <laughs> I spend in there. Uh -huh. I have a few shorter nose hairs than when I went in. <laughs> Indeed. I somehow start smelling exactly like whatever is seeping in the atmosphere in the room, even though I've not used scented soaps. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? 
I also oh, have a feeling to fill the bathtub slightly below that rim of scum. Okay. So I don't get that in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you managed to clean yourself off pretty well. So. Troop troop. Yeah. What's your plan? I don't know. We can well, go to one of two places, really, at this point. Yes, go there are two places kid. that we can go. We, oh, did we want to divvy up the loot? Because I did that. Yeah, okay. now you, oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so I split the money last time. Prematurely, but I still did it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Stop honking. Um, Honk. so Honk. everybody, every single person gets 350 silver and 1,380 copper. Jesus. That's so yeah. much. I know. But that's okay. I have. And then what about the other stuff? Um,. Claim dibs on it as you please. I, yeah, Mm -hmm. we had uh, two potions of fire breath. Mm -hmm. Um, How did, how exactly does this work? I'm assuming you drink it and then. But like what, like, how is it like an action, a bonus action to breathe fire? I have no idea. I just wrote down that it was a thing. Let me look at what it was. Uh. Um, bonus action after drinking this potion which is an action you can use a bonus action to exhale fire at a target within 30 feet of you target must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw or take 4d6 fire damage on a failed save the effect ends after you exhale the fire three times or when an hour has passed I'll take one of those Okay, so that's one. I do better than that with my normal stuff, so I don't need one. Okay, so you take uh, a potion of fire breath. Uh, as you bring it over, like the this orange liquid inside of it kind of jostles in the vial, and you watch as like shimmers of like a lighter yellow. It's it's like the colors of flames flickering as it jostles the other one. Um, in in the vial. Would you want me to add that to Foundry or? I must have had to use it. Just add a GBD and DB on right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And it's equipment. And it, it's literally called Potion of Fire Breath, and Fire yeah. Breath is two words. Add. All right, cool. Okay, so that's that. Then we had 10 Aya Gates. Okay, that's for well, selling. I mean, agates? Yeah. And, yeah, we could just sell those. I guess I could just hang on to those. We had a delicate dragon mask. Uh, I mean, that is a, a, a mask of... Uh, it's got, like, the five different heads of Tiamat uh, as the crown on top of the mask. and. Uh... Well, no, the, the crown oh, was the, a Oh, the crown thing. was a different thing. There was a mask that was like... It's like a, a porcelain mask, right? Yeah, and then the bronze crown is what had, like, the five different spire things on it that were, like, dragons. And it, it was from, like, the demon goddess Tiamat. We might want to hold on to that, but probably in my bag where no one can yeah. easily find it. Yeah, yeah the, the, the mask the mask weighs about a pound and it's worth twenty five gold. Okay. I don't care about the mask, but the crown probably. Yeah. The crown uh the crown weigh is uh two hundred and fifty gold and it weighs two and a half pounds. Okay. I think we should hold on to both. Yeah, for now at least we can put them in the bag as well as, well as the, the agate. Yeah. yeah. We'll probably come, come across a place to sell this later. Yeah. Okay. So money has been that? divvied up. Items, there were uh, a couple of potions of healing, I believe, found in the boxes. I think. Did, we... did you guys drink it? What? Tell me the one that found them, but tell me the one that took them, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we may have already, didn't uh, we already I didn't divvy them do up? that. We already did divvy them up. Oh, okay. And I thought Eric took them. No. That was you. You found them and then said, does anyone need a health potion? And then anyone who did said yes, and then took a health potion. So okay. That, anyone is me. <laughs> <laughs> 
You were hurting at that point, weren't you? Oh yeah, no, of course I was. That's the only way. That's the only reason that I remember that we already divvied them up and took them is because I know for a fact that after that first like dungeon crawl when we came out, I absolutely <laughs> did not have thirty hit points between like, like I had to have taken a health potion. Yep. Okay. I think you guys also took a, a short rest. We did, but that was like at the very beginning of the dungeon. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't you take a short rest or before no, no, you fought Vaz? There was one in there as well, but that was before, and I only had one hit die at that point. Okay. That's why I like didn't recover anything. Well, you guys are at full health now. It is the morning. Uh, the day is in front of you. It's like eight, it's like nine in the morning. No, you got you got at three thirty. Uh, what, what's the date today? It's actually a little later in the morning. It's like 11 a.m. And it is currently... Uh, you are making me... Uh, it is the 27th of Flame Rule. Okay, so the options are either to go to the villa or find this other kid. Okay, so yeah, we had... That he we had I... going to Amrick at the Low Lantern or seeking a way to get into the Van Thamper Villa and find if Thabby's Creek is still there. Um, I'd say... I think so... we kind of decided to go to Amrick at the Low Lantern because he would be able to give us more information about things. Mm. But they, they said that they already know that we're in... They know that we're in the city. Yeah, they have imps around, so they, they know they don't know to look for us, but they know we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I oh, I just thought of something. I'd, I'd almost I'd almost want to go to the villa simply because that if they know that we're messing around, um. True. If we go mess with a kid, they'll know we did and start. Yeah, there might be an action taken against to fortify the villa. So I'd say the villa. I'll vote the villa as well. Farah, what was your idea? Well, I just thought of something. You know that that rich guy that offered us money and we were like, nah, we too rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who? Oh. Klim just saw the guy that uh, yeah. was yeah, the guy with the the that was really chained in his underwear and was like, My yeah. family will pay you handsomely and we were like, Yeah, yeah, get lost. Do you do you think he would like report to someone that we were down there, and then they would connect the fact that all those dead bodies and the oh shit. Were... I don't well, know we're if he would report it though. We're deputized, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Oh, no, we, we could have absolutely just oh, okay, in there, but didn't. Yeah. That's okay. Well, then no worries, then. So he owes us his life, like, Ooh. and probably some money. You know, we could just go over there and be like, "Hey, we kind of saved your life." Anyway, remember that money you offered us? Sort this man. <laughs> let's go to the villa. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll vote the villa. Okay. Hey, so, um, Ian, would yeah. I know anything about the villa where it is? Since uh, my okay. history with the, with those uh, people. Amrin, give me a history check with advantage. Okay. Advantage. Ooh. Yeah, this is stuff he would know, but it's been a while since you've been in Baldur's Gate. So, uh, you know, knowing people, yeah, but remembering exactly where the villa would be is uh, a bit diff different. Take okay. that. 20. 24. Uh, yes, you know exactly where Van Thamper Villa is. Uh, it is in the upper city, so you will have to pass through one of the many gates separating the lower city from the upper city. But you you could pretty accurately guide yourself to Van Thamper Villa if you needed to. Uh, I have access. Well, I know I have, backwards into it. I have uh, changed it on the map, so you should be able to see Van Thamper Villa mm -hmm. on the map now. Would that have a role? Would I know any back ways into it that? Most people would come out and hear huh. like that. Huh. Are you going to sneak in there in broad daylight? I'm just saying um, to have the option. Like, you you remember from your days cavorting and drinking with Mortlock. 
that uh, Thalamra is a very secretive woman when it comes to where she lives. Uh, she has guards all set up throughout the building. It might be kind of difficult to sneak past them. They're like on patrol. Um, but uh, you know that there is an outer wall that you'd have to get over. Like that's a, like a 10, 15 foot wall before you'd be able to access the estate itself. Um, you don't know of any, there's two entrances. There's a back entrance and a front entrance into the villa. There's like gates at both sides, the north and the south of the villa, but uh, entering through any of those is gonna be noticeable. Uh, climbing the walls might be different, or, uh, I mean, that that's what you would know. As I tell everyone this, I ask, do we want to do this? Do we want to try to just go in the front door as, you know, diplomatically, or are we going to go sneaky, sneaky, freaky? Mm. Well, if they already know that we're in the city... Well, I, um, I don't... I they don't like necessarily they... know we're in the city. They know we exist because well, the M would have reported well, anybody entering. They I don't exactly like, know who we are yet. I feel like it may be more advantageous in the long run if we don't try to trespass. I mean, honest, honestly, um, the less attention we draw to ourselves, the better. Yeah, so. and if we got caught fucking sneaking into like the villa i feel like they'd be like less likely to, to i don't know not cooperate but like tell us anything or do anything like does that make sense kind of like they'd already have a negative connotation to us mm -hmm. for trying to sneak into their villa as opposed to requesting an audience i'm going to tell you they're are going to have a negative disposition if they see me yeah wait uh, to give you some backstory, they're the ones who set my company on a doomed mission that ultimately led to me meeting you guys. Oh. Hmm. So you were under contract with them. I'm a mercenary. I was a mercenary, so we were contracted to lead an attack on El Torel. A distraction attack so something else could happen. So why would they be mad at you? And we got, we got wrecked. We ran away. Then we met Shago, and then you know from there. Mm. But why would they be uh, since, hostile to you? You didn't do anything. Because we got sent on a suicide mission. Yeah, but yeah. you would be the one that at them, not I, they don't care. He wasn't meant to come back. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I burnt half her son's face off, whether she liked him or not. And that makes we sense. already know. Like, we already... Why would she be mad at you for doing what she told you to do? Like, yeah. that didn't make sense. Yeah, she, to get back at me, she sent my entire company to die. When we mission failed, we to get back knew at we couldn't come to Baldur's Gate. Fucking up her kid's face. Yes. Okay. Sorry, Noble I'm women are sorry. bitches. I was just trying to get the details straight. Say that sewer queen probably doesn't have any, you know, morals per se. Hold on a second. I wrote something else down at some point, maybe. <clears throat> maybe me. I didn't write it down. Maybe I just forgot. Believe it. Ow, I just hit myself in the face. Okay, hold on. It's an aggressive note flipping you're doing. <laughs> I, I, I know. Um, what uh, did Mortlock tell us about? Her sending people into the sewers, or not sewers, yes. I guess sewers. Okay, so he did tell us about that. I believe so, yes. I guess I just didn't write it down, because I remembered that being a thing. Yeah, she sent some uh, people into the sewers to find an item that uh, she needed to complete her plans. Okay. Well, that sounds like time is of the essence then mm -hmm. because of what just happened in El Terrell. and she said she wanted to send you know Baldur's Gate to Avernus so let's see the sooner we get her out of the uh -huh. picture the better 
isn't but how are we gonna get close enough to her to do that yeah. if she's got such like heavy guard posted because obviously we're not the only people who have heard something like even if it's a rumor well we're not gonna go in there guns blazing well no that's she has guards crazy. everywhere exactly so how are we gonna do it stealthy <laughs> so you do want to sneak in there what other choice do we have wait till nighttime. <laughs> Yeah, stealthy. The time is of the essence. Exactly. I, I'm pretty sure that no matter what the hour would be, there would be guards posted. Well, the yeah. only the only thing that would help us is the cover maybe, of night. Maybe we could like stake out. Not that's a bad way to put it, but like I don't know, just kind of like get a feel for the like area around the villa, and maybe like watch like guard rotations possibly or like just like take note of like the weak spots in security yeah in case the joint so to speak yeah i do have a foldable crate for stealth missions oh my god true oh my. i forgot about the portable crate me too <laughs> oh my god dun 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 okay uh so are you guys yeah, heading to the do it. upper All city right. now you guys begin making your way through the sprawling streets of Baldur's Gate, working your way through the dock wards. Uh, uh, the smell of fish is heavy in the air uh, until you it takes finally half time because of Emerald. Uh, yes, it does take half time because of Emerald. So you're like coasting along. Uh, you hear like many vendors on corners. A two copper for a skewer of meat as you pass through. Don't um, take the street. Me. <laughs> uh, actually, let me make the investigation sounds way too dark. It's Don't take the oh, street. Oh, no. I cut off a bit there. Just take, we're we're straight up, just take it. What happens? Who, hello? Did you just take it or did you pay for it? Who? Uh, I paid for it. Oh. Tony took some street meat. Okay. I think you were cutting out. Yeah, I, I I lagged for a second. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can take uh some street. That'll be two copper, please. Ty, what kind of meat is it? Hey, uh, this is meat. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Meat. I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. I just buy it. It's supposed to be beef. So it's mutton. It's to be beef. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Make it yeah, come safe. Yeah, all right, good. <laughs> make have, a good have a good yeah. day. Takes a bite. Has to make a con save. Yeah, I'll take a bite. I'll take. I'll eat it all in one go. Oh, oh, you gosh. eat it all in one go. Uh, give me a con save. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, I'm good at that. Three, nine. <laughs> Uh, you're poisoned for an hour. Uh, yes. It's just, it's just like food, like bad food. Like your stomach is growling. You're gonna have disadvantage on ability checks for like an hour. We told uh, you not to take the street meat. So poisoned? Is that what you yes, said? Yes, that's the condition. Poisoned. Okay, I have put on the condition of poison. Okay, you have done. You have done the condition of poisoned. But Tommy Del Torre. Everyone just. Slaps his hand, head with his palm, and just says, "We told her. We told her." Uh, but you, you do make your way one. through through the city until you reach uh, a gate. Uh, the gate is currently closed, and there are two guards uh, with uh, spears standing uh, in front of the gate, and they kind of come up to it uh, at attention as you approach the gate. Um, uh, is there anything I can do for you? I pull out the crest that was given to us, signifying oh, the deputy government. Okay, um, absolutely, uh, sir. Uh, you you may pass. Uh, let me let me unlock. Uh, he unlocks the gate. He pulls out a key, uh, puts it back in his pocket. Uh, you, Flaming fish is welcome in the upper city any time of the day. Uh, and he, he opens it, and you guys go through. Uh, Amrian begins leading you closer and closer to uh, Van Thamper Villa. Can I get perception checks from everybody? Everybody. Everybody. I mean, I guess I could use passive perception. 
Oh, I mean, I think we can look out at this point anyway. Yeah, Feyre and Emeril with your passives. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, no. Ooh, that's a that's a nasty. Literally one. So Feyre and Emeril. I don't yeah. Um, mostly Feyre. Her her passive is nineteen. Uh, <laughs> you as you're getting closer to Van Thamper Villa, uh, you see there is someone. A slight of build wearing like a large brown cloak um, with a hood up uh, who seems to be uh, watching you guys. Following or watching? With the 17, uh, do I see this guy? Uh, yes. Yeah, they're slight of build. They're not huge, but they, they are covered in a cloak with the cloak like with the uh, the hood pulled down low so you can barely see a face. Wait, they're doing what? They're just watching us. They're they're following you. They're watching oh, you. Following us. Okay. Just don't act suspicious. So, and how close are we to the? Maybe the, like twenty feet. Oh, from the villa. Uh, yeah. you're a couple hundred feet away from it. You're like nearby ish now. Okay. Uh, there's a a twelve foot high wall that completely surrounds the villa with two, like, giant double doors, uh, one on the south side and one on the north side. Uh, at the north side, you can hear, like, the stamping of hoof hooves, and uh, you can smell hay. Um, and... Uh, Quick random question. Yes. Uh, what is a normal jump height? Uh, you're killing me. Uh, D and D jump it's only five feet. calculator. I believe it's something to do with your strength, and it also depends on if you're running or if it's a straight jump or if you're jumping up. Uh. Well, I have boots of striding and springing, so I can jump three times the normal distance. What's your strength score? Uh, nineteen. Okay, uh, oh. Huh. Okay. Okay. You're Ian, wasn't I expecting this? <laughs> with, with a running start, your high jump is 21 feet. And oh my how god. Tall the, how tall is the thing? Your long, 12. Your long jump is 57 feet horizontally. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, what's the your heart? Wait, with a running wall, twelve feet, you... twelve okay, feet. Okay, so I could clear it yeah, easily. <laughs> with, without a running start, you can. Your long jump is twenty-seven feet, and your high jump is ten and a half feet. So if you didn't run, you wouldn't be able to just jump the wall. Okay. <laughs> just I said that just to keep that in mind for this, just in case. I've got a, a jump you calculator up now. Over. I have a jump calculator now open because of you. You're welcome. <laughs> Parkour. Um, Literally, fucking, I, I, I have a feeling you didn't expect me to say 19. No, I, okay. I, I forgot. I'm assuming it's the, the gauntlets. Yeah. Of course. I'm decked out. I'm superhuman now. Um, hey, Feyre. Mm -hmm. You watch as the cloaked figure comes closer to you. I was not expecting to see you guys here. Matomi throws up a little bit in her mouth. Oh my god. <laughs> keep it in, please keep it in. I'm so Do I recognize the voice? You do. It's only been like a day or two. Um, she kind of like lifts her hood up a little bit and you see uh, the dark skin and vibrant red uh, fluffy hair. Oh. Of uh, Rhea. Huh? Oh. Rhea, Rhea Mantlemorn. Uh, oh. The, the <laughs> girl on the ship that I totally like dissed. Yeah. yeah. That I, I solidly oh, yeah. ignored. <laughs> yeah, the one, the one that. Oh, you, yes. Yes. The, uh, she was oh, right a newly ordained Hellrider. Yeah. Right before the city fell. <clears throat> what are you guys doing here? Um, how about you answer that first? Why are you being all sneaky and watching us? Okay. 
So, well, A, I've been sort of, you know, uh, on the run from the law. Turns out being a hell rider in this city, not the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've already tried. Oh, really? Yeah, they already tried to arrest me once. Um, Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I got that going for me. But here's the thing. I have heard rumors. I've, I, I, I have, I believe it completely. Favius Krieg is in the city. I, I think, I think he's being held captive uh, by the Van Thampers. Uh, I, I heard rumors um, that he uh, was being kept by them. I, I went to spy on Amric at the Low Lantern last night, but nothing really happened there. So I was thinking of uh, going to the villa tonight and then trying to sneak in and find him uh, and, you know, free him. And, w- and, and what exactly is where your plan you Oh, I, I mean, I've been asking around the city uh, ever since I got in here a couple days ago. Uh, I have it on, on good authority that he was seen being escorted by her guards uh, into the villa. So he wasn't in El Terrell when it was taken. No. <laughs> Tell me. That... What was that? Maybe he didn't need to be. Um, I mean, once once we can, you know, find him and and get him free of the Van Thamper's control, uh, I'm sure he'll be able to tell us what's happening. Uh huh. So, what was your plan again to to do what you were gonna do? I was going to wait until the cover of darkness, and then I was going to attempt to break into uh, the villa. By Why? Yourself. Why By are yourself. you? I was. I was. And where exactly were you? I swore. Do that? I swore a duty. I swore a duty to El Terrell, and in turn to its leader. I mean, I, I have to save him. I have to. If if I know where he is, uh, if he's being held capture, I have to help. But you can't uphold your duty if you get caught. Well, what are you guys doing here? We were just taking a stroll. Insight check. We're we're here to uh, to talk to Kalim Jasal. Uh, give me a deception check with advantage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, disadvantage or deception with what did you say? Advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Twenty fucking two. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. damn! <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Okay. Um. Get well. Wrecked. Um. Okay. Uh. That's. Uh. What is Clem? Clem? What is his name? What are you looking for him for? Clem just. Uh, he owes us money. Oh. Well. Okay. Um. He's a friend of ours from a ways back. Okay. Well, um, okay, um, you, well, you guys go do that. I, I gotta do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep watching. I'm gonna, you know, find, give, surveil the place. You yes, guys. You know, do you? Okay, I will. I'm gonna step back and mutter to Emerald. If he gets caught trying to sneak in, that's going to make our job so much harder. It is going to make our job harder. So we should probably knock her out? Unless she creates the diversion without knowing it. That's what I was thinking, the diversion. But Tommy belches a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) You need a bag or something? Are you gonna? Are, can you keep it down? (laughs) Fight it, Matomi, fight it. Constitution (laughs) roll. <laughs> it's been like 20 minutes since you ate the you guys you still got like a f- good 40 minutes of of feeling unwell <laughs> i mean i've seen what street meat can do to people it's more than just feeling unwell yeah but she's a horse but 
Uh, I whisper, <laughs> whisper back to Amrian. I mean, she's eluded the guard for this long. I, I'd, I'd wager she's pretty stealthy. Why couldn't she be an asset to us? Why, why would you, why would, why would you want that? Why not? Well, if we're found working with her, she's on the run from the law. Isn't she a little young to be doing that? You are one um, to talk. Yeah. <laughs> wow! <laughs> the 17-year-old says about the other 17-year-old. I know, that's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hmm. I mean, this person is a refugee. So... I don't think it would go over well if we knocked her out. She'd know who did it. Oh, absolutely. I mean... Okay, how about whatever side she's trying to sneak in, we sneak in the opposite and just wait for a commotion when she inevitably fails. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna turn to her. She, she uh, looks up. Hi! I'm so just you're... innocent and young. Yeah! <laughs> How how well have you been eluding the guard thus far? Um, I mean, I only got caught the one time. Uh, and that was like the first day. Now that I but know, you know, to stay loo- low, you know, I'm... You didn't know that they were looking for that for no, any... I had no what idea. What you're part of again? The Hellriders? The Hellriders, right. No, the, the... You know, hmm. the, the fighters for El Terrell. Rode into hell and saved the day. Yeah. I, I could use some help. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna look at everybody. Just like guys, come on. No. If anything, if anything, she's an asset. Okay. No. If I lose another toe, it's her fault. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn back to another? her and say. Yeah, remember my fun fact a couple weeks ago? I, oh, I, I was I was playing as uh, Rhea. Oh. A- another? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, golly gee. Which was it, the left or the right foot? Uh, the left. It was the left foot. The left? Pinky, Pinky toe. toe. Pinky toe, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just turning to her and say, listen, we're going to level with you. We okay. are thinking about doing the same thing. Oh. We have different motives than you. Slightly. But, I mean, as... They kind of work together. As Hopefully. long as I can find, um, you know, Thavius, I, I've... Oof. I mean, Emperor Krieg. Uh, High Lord Krieg. I don't know. I'm nervous. <laughs> I can do this. So I don't like this. Why not? I just think she's going to cause more trouble than she's worth. Well, what can you bring to the table? How can you get in and out Okay. without um, hurting yourself? Well, I'm not super stealthy. Um, I'm not unstealthy. I'm just not, like, proficient in it. Uh, but I can tell when people are lying. I'm pretty good at that. I'm good at convincing That's people to good. do stuff. Um, and, uh, I have, I have a little bit of healing that I can do. Mm. Um, and I'm really good at smiting evil. If, if okay. something needs smiting, I can smite it. Okay. <sighs> well, hmm. So... Just, just a general question. How do you feel about Duke Van Thamber being the one that's holding Creed? I mean, she um, uh, she must be evil of or something. Like, no, why would you hold such a holy man captive? So, so Van Th- if, if Van Thamber is holding him against his will, she needs to be taken out. She is evil. I will smite her. You do realize that that would set this already very turmoil-filled city up on its head, and you'd probably have more people looking for you. Yes, but running. if we can prove that she was holding a head of state captive, that might, you know, 
swing things in my favor. So how would you prove just... it if she was dead? So this has but become... If he's like alive... If we can save Favius Krieg, he will vouch for us, of course. And not to mention, you claim that you're really good at telling if people are lying. Yes. Does that extend if you have a bias towards somebody? Like, um, if it I was don't... somebody you really liked, really admired, I don't if think they were so. Lying. Um, you know. I, I'm. I don't think anyone I'm. I that's really you know close to me. I don't think they would lie to me. But I'm pretty sure I would be able to know. They lied straight to my face. Okay. Hmm. I'd say you'd probably make if you were assisted with someone else, maybe myself or Ki or Killith. You would probably make a good scouting party for tonight. Okay. Uh, you, I, you guys are... Huh? Do you, know anything, do you know anything about this place already, or...? Uh, nothing other than there's two main entrances, one in the north, one in the south. Uh, I was gonna see if I could find a building nearish by that was higher up that I could maybe scale in, in like, an alley or something and see if I could get a bird's-eye view of, of the place. I can help could. you do that. Okay. Sure. Uh, do you want to go do that now? Yeah, we, uh, can, we can stay down at the street level and, and watch, like, take a look at the guard postings and see when they may or may not be changing. Sure. Uh, Amory so will push by an uh, area that he can see from the north, see the north gate at, and hide in his foldable crate. Okay. <laughs> you are in a crate nearby. Um, you from the north side. We, uh. With your perception, let me see what your passive is. Your passive is 14. You hear the clanging of some metal as, like, someone bangs on an anvil. Um, Emerald and Rhea, you're going to climb up a building nearby? I guess look for the taller buildings in the area that could possibly so look... So, the tall. villa itself, there's, like, a street that runs completely around it. So, there's nothing directly next to the villa. Yeah. There's no, like, trees or anything either that kind of go over the wall. Mm -hmm. But there is a building uh, that there is a uh, a thin alleyway that you guys could probably duck into and then climb up if you wanted to. Amrian, where did you, what gate did you say you were going to be at? The north gate. The north gate. Okay. Yeah, I will do that with her. Okay. Uh, give me an athletics check. Athletics. Is that strength-based? Uh, that is strength based. Yes. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Oof. Uh, Rhea, Rhea climbs up like with ease and she looks at you like halfway through struggling and she reaches down and, and helps you up the rest of the way. Okay. I'm just. God. Kids. I wish I was spry and limber like that. Oh, wait, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you guys are up top. Uh, give me a perception check. Be stealthy about it. Uh, da, da, da. A 17. 17. Okay, with the 17, you can see over the 12-foot wall, and you can see some things. Uh, I'm going to say that this building that you climbed is on the southwestern portion of the road that surrounds it. So uh, what I'm going to be describing is what you see from that angle. You see uh, just a couple of trees, a couple of bushes. You see a several-storied uh, house, a large stone edifice. Um, let me read this description as I look. Uh, there is two buildings, actually. Uh, there's a larger one that is very clearly a house, and there's a detached, uh, what appears to be a stable house. Uh, you can barely make out uh, uh, some light seeping out from underneath the door. It looks like the forge is active. Um, there are lanterns hanging along uh, the interior. You can tell uh, where the interior wall is. There's a couple of lanterns hanging around. Um... 
there is uh, two doors to the south, one that appears to be a carriage door and one for uh, people, both on the south wall. Uh, the house itself is uh, two stories. Uh, there's a tower on top. There are sloped clay red tiled rooftops. Um, there are several windows on the first and second floor. Uh, you sort of see a little bit of light in one of the windows on the second floor, but nothing else. Um, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm looking at this from the north side? You're looking at the southwest. So, southwest side, okay. Yes, we are looking at the southwest. You see uh, three guards walking north along the western side of the building, and as they reach a corner and make a right to continue their patrol, you watch another group of three soldiers begin walking along the southern edge of the building coming from the east to the west. Uh, and then they turn a corner and start beginning walking north. And then you see another group of three soldiers turn the corner from the west and going uh, from the west to the east again along the south. It looks like there's a couple of groups of three soldiers just walking in circles around this house. Okay. I'm I'm real as I'm looking at this, I'm relaying all of it through my rocky talkie. Okay. Do you see? So we, we have at least nine guards that we're aware of. Yeah, so nine guards, uh, three sets of three, all Correct. walking in set uh, set paths. Are they walking in the same direction? Yes. No, they, well, uh, they're oh, all mean, walking. If if you were to look at the house like it's a clock, they're walking clockwise. Okay. Okay. Okay, and to the stables and all that stuff. Okay. How how long do you watch? I probably just I want to get a good a good observation of their like their their tendencies, like which way they tend to look upon like what what route. So like if they're up okay. on the west side, what what spots do they look at? Um, well, they they probably for a good twenty minutes. For good, only twenty minutes. Uh, they, I mean, they walk around in like a brisk pace. They're they're looking, but they don't look like too bothered. It's not like they're on active watch or anything. They are, uh, they, they're active, but they're not like it doesn't look like they've been informed that there's going to be an attempt on anything. They, this is just their job. See, cover duty. They know they have to do it, and they don't want to do it, but they're doing it anyway. Correct. Yeah. Uh, maybe about halfway, but uh, halfway into you watching, uh, you see uh, someone walk up to the door, knock mm -hmm. on the door. the The main door is in the uh, south. Uh, you watch the door open up. There is a uh, it's like a very old man uh, answers the door. He's in this like kind of sloppy looking suit. He has graying hair above his ears, and that's the only part of his head that has hair. A couple of liver spots on his uh, balding head. Uh, he looks maybe 70, uh, answers the door, um, nods at who knocked on the door, and then uh, ushers them inside. Okay. The door closes. Uh, nothing else happens. Who came inside? Uh, the person that came inside is give me a second while i look up their name uh da, 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 da. pearson the person uh it looked like a young man uh with a long hair in a ponytail he looked in, in like well-to-do clothing but it doesn't look like just like frivolous rich clothing it looked like a he was dressed up uh, for a job Okay. Like so um, he, he was dressed up to the to the best he could be. Yes. Okay. Okay. And he just walk. He just walks straight into the villa. Uh, we, he talked to the old man for a minute before he was ushered oh. inside. Okay. Okay. So again, I'm reta I'm doing all of this. I'm telling all of this to the rest of everybody. What is the little girl doing next to me? Um, she, it, she's got her, she's got her hands like binoculars around her eyes to like 
just like cut <laughs> off the rest of the world so she can just concentrate on the uh, on the villa and she's like counting you, you can see her like counting on her fingers she's trying she's trying and then and then at a certain moment she stops counting and then she starts counting again are you sure you're up for this uh yes uh if my if my calculations are right it's about a minute and a half between rotations so while one group is hitting the corner, the other group will be on the other corner. So if we're fast about it, and if this is the rotation as is, and this is how it stays, if we rush in, we should be able to make it past them before one of the groups sees us. Okay. I would suggest... Uh, looking here... Well, there's a balcony on the second floor, uh, almost near, like, above to the left where the front door is. We could go in through there, um, or maybe, uh, uh, maybe through the back door on the north side. Mm. Um, hmm. You said the Van Thampers, they're like dukes? Yeah. Oh. They're of high nobility. Okay. Would they have only, like, two ways to get out? Would Do you think they would have a different way? I mean, they would probably... I don't know. I don't... Do you think they would have... Well, no. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. She is... I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know, but um, I'd probably you'd agree that probably looks like state like stables over there. Uh, yeah, that looks uh, over. You mean like the northwest corner? Yeah, that little that detached house housing. Yeah, I would honestly best avoid that. OK, because um, if we end up spooking the horses. Right. Sound. OK, it's, it's all over. Okay, so in that case, then maybe we should, maybe we should go in through the front door. If we can time it right, I'd say that'd be our best bet, best way to get inside. But we have no way of knowing what's going on underneath there. Uh, I mean, if we go late enough, we just have to hope that the entry hall is empty. Yeah, That's well, the best we can do. Or I guess we're pretty good at, you know taking things out fast. I don't know about quiet, but I mean, we'll try. I got my okay. arrows. Okay. I think we've seen about as much as we can see. So I've, I've relayed that timing instructions to <laughs> everybody else. Uh, I'm going to say we get back down onto the street level and just uh, wait unless anybody else has anything they want to do. No. Matomi spits on the ground. Okay, Matomi spits on the ground. Still got that bad beef taste in your mouth? By I now, mean, it tasted fine. By now, your poison effect is over. Okay. Oh, okay. So what did we learn? Uh, street meat is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> There's always next time. Good. How do I take the effect off? Oh, got it. Okay, Make got sure it. you study for the exam next time. Okay. Okay. So, what would you guys like to do? I know it's nine o'clock, but we did get a little bit of a late start. Uh, is any everyone okay with going for like maybe twenty or thirty more minutes? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. good. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. So. I've done the scouting. If anybody else wants to do anything else, any preparatory work. I'm going to tinker up some noisemakers. Ooh, to bait them. Okay. Yeah, yeah you can use your, your magical tinkering feature to make a couple of noisemakers. Uh, I think you can only have like two or three, right? Yeah, I can, well, I can have three, but I can't dispel one of them because one of 
because one of the things I have going is Droop's little hologram thing, and I can't get rid of that. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. So you can make two. Uh, I can make three, actually. I have four of them. Oh, okay. Then you can make three. Baller. So you, you have a way of creating a distraction. But no, Ooh. if you do throw, like, I'll uh, as your DM, I'm being nice here. If you cause a distraction with a noise, they'll know something's happening. Also, uh, thing of note, I thought I still had this, and I do. I have a steel mirror to look around corners. Beautiful. Okay. Ooh. Also, I... It also says, examine wounds you've received on hard-to-see parts of your bodies. Make sure like... you look good enough to present yourself to a queen, or keep an eye on Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd also argue, like, maybe it might just be, like, it, it could, all, you know, it could either be seen as, like, you know, someone's trying to distract us, or it could be seen as, like, you know, people pulling pranks on higher society. Maybe, yeah. But, I mean, if you're a guard at night, you know, depending what it is, you, the noise would draw your attention regardless if you took it seriously or not. Yeah. Uh, Ian, can I spend the time we wait to... Uh... Add my armor so that it doesn't creak and take away a disadvantage of soul checks. Uh, you mean change your infusion to something that would do that? No. Or... Um. Wait, what do you mean? Just like add like little padding so that it doesn't clank here and there. Okay, give me item. give me an intelligence check. That we're, that's just what we're going to use for tinkering. So an intelligence check and add your proficiency bonus. Hmm. Uh, one second, sorry. Dun, dun. <laughs> Baldur's Gate is a very... Uh, uh, what's the word? A drum-filled city. It's very percussive. It's people banging on their pot bellies. <laughs> uh, okay. 24. Uh, 24 total. Yeah. Okay. So you can add some padding into your armor because you're kind of like haphazardly doing it on the go. And it, this is not going to be a permanent effect, but for the next day, uh, any disadvantage imposed by your armor uh, will be canceled out, so it'll just be regular roll. Sweet. If I'm sticking around the crate, does that mean I get a vanish of stealth? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tactical espionage action. However, because you're in a crate, your speed will be halved. If if that's how you're going to be moving around, is that fair? That's more than fair. Thank you. Okay. I'm imagining SpongeBob scooting around on the floor. <laughs> In the episode, he's just like, beware of the hooks. Don't let him get to me, Mr. Krabs. Yep. Okay. So, okay. Uh, you guys are going to wait until it's dark to, to try to do this? Yeah. I mean, all of us can see in the dark, so why not? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, actually, I can't. But you know, just I'll okay. follow. Just I'll follow close. Hmm. Okay, uh, so the day goes by. So, boys, everyone that matters can see in the dark. Oof! Poor Rhea. Big, Big oof energy. Okay, uh, and you guys, uh, you guys make it through the day, kind of doing your watch. Um, and the night begins, it, it gets dark, uh, the city lights, you know, come back up. I guess I should switch back to night. Just click the night button. And the lights of the city begin filling up and turning on. Um, and... It is. It's like 11 p.m. now. It's like dark enough that you think you would be able to to do what you need to do. <clears throat> so, are we doing this? Yeah. 
Mission um, start So, <laughs> yeah. Um, are we going to need someone up top to tell when the coast is clear or when we have that that start of that minute? Um, I can do that. Okay. Uh, I am going to... You, you, have the jump, you have the jumps to be able to get you ac- uh, across to the villa. I do. I get the jump. I assume. Does okay. she? Uh, she can if she activates her boots. Yeah, I to just cool. jump I right over. Using my boots. Uh, I'm going to put you guys on the map, so give me a second. Just make sure all Rocky Talkies are active. While you're, while you're doing that, I'm going to get to my ibuprofen real quick. Okay. okay. Are you feeling okay, Annie? Yeah, I had to go to the doctor yesterday, and I'm still feeling not so good. Oh, oh no. To give her a shot. She got a shot? For what? I don't know. I, I was just I was just thinking, why would you know, doctor's visit make you feel bad? Okay. The only conclusion I came to was a shot, so... <laughs> These are some really weird bugs. Oh. These fireflies look weird. <laughs> Can awesome. we see her token? What she look like? Uh, let me sh- let me show you what she looks Aww, like. Oh, she's cute. Yeah, let me see if I can show you her picture. Or see. Let me see. Uh, I also like the name that I have with uh, Dylan. Emrio Morel. Emrio Morel. Mor- oh, God. Uh, do you guys That's see funny. her picture? She's so Cute. Yeah. Yeah, that's Get that's rare. Big ass gauntlets. She's only seventeen. She's only seventeen. Does she feel the beat of the tambourine? She almost looks like the armor's a little bit too big for her. Especially like the, like just, the boots and the, yeah. It's just it's just a little too big. Okay. That's so great. the door you're currently in front of is seems to be the main door. Uh, the door to your left uh, seems to be like the coach door, where like a uh, that's where like a horse drawn carriage would go through. Mm-hmm. Okay, Killeth. Yes. Give me a stealth check. Okay. We have. Sixteen. Why do I have a light aura? Uh, five foot of light. J- only it's only you can see that. Oh, okay. Okay. Five, five foot of bright light, and the rest is dim. I'm nice as a DM. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um. Ooh, is this? Give me one second. I see an area that I haven't. I didn't do a wall correctly, so light is seeping through. Right, row. And that's unacceptable. Unacceptable! I knew. I just knew it. Okay. I stopped that light. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, I'm still in fucking wall select. I just drew a wall in the middle of nowhere. Delete said wall. Uh, I am going to roll a... Well, actually, they have passive investigation. Uh, in uh, Perception, actually. You rolled a what? A 16? Okay, you pop over the uh, the wall just as three of them are walking past. Are we going to be having somebody walking on the nearby building? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like- you you got like the, you have to time it right where uh, nobody can see the door. We give it. Well, you're, what you're th- doing I thought is you're. I was going to the other building they went to. The same building that we went to. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I thought you were popping over the wall, like the wall on no. the outside, to like look over and see when they were walking by. 
I uh, no, I'm going to the building that the two of them. So are you to are you gonna to sit and out over the rocky talkies? Are you gonna sit out then? Well, then she would have enough with her boots of spr- striding and springing. She'd have enough to like leap. I over. could make the jump. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure, you can do that. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for landing quietly. That's okay. Okay. Uh, you, that too. So you get up there, you watch as they walk past, and you you know now it now is the time for to go. I now is the time. Go. Okay, guys. I feel astronaut's action. I get in my crate. Okay, uh, it's time, guys. What are you doing? Okay, we're just waiting for. Killeth told you it was the time. Yeah, I said go. Oh, it is. Okay, so we we open the door. Go. And give me a, give me a stealth. Give me a oh. stealth check, everybody. I'm gonna pause you before you go too far. <laughs> okay. I love that I can do that. <laughs> Wait, no. Am I going with them? It, are are you? You are attempting to infiltrate the villa right now. Are you going or are you staying? If not, you're not going to be in the next dungeon. I will go. That's, Sorry. That, okay. I think you pause the game so the rolls and go over to the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was not aware. What are we rolling for? Stealth. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, I unpaused. It doesn't seem to be going through. I rolled a 19. Okay. Everybody else? I rolled an 18. Okay. I'm more stealthy than him. <laughs> 23. Okay. Yeah. Feyre? Uh, my game just for... Hold on. This is some military music that we're hearing. Sirenscape. So, are we going straight for the house, or are we going around? I'd say straight for that door. Okay, I'll wait until everyone's ready then. I'll kind of like, I'll kind of usher people through and then shut the the gate behind uh, everybody. How's uh, how's your your thing, Farah? Uh, it's not loading. Hold on, I can just roll physical dice and bring up my D and D Beyond. Okay. Sure. I mean, what seems that- to be the issue? Uh, it was frozen, and so I tried to hit the restart or the refresh button, and now it's not doing anything. Oh, just go back to the Forge website. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Provided it lets you pick your character again. It does. She's she's not on the list. Mm, okay. Hi, Mio. Hello, big boy. Meow. How about that sports ball game, y'all? Dude, oh, sports I, ball. I do points. love sports ball. Um, they did. They did sports ball. Like their defense was good, but their offense was like, eh, it was. You know, like, yeah, they, yeah. I got a nine. Ooh. Just adding, doing the physical dice. Okay. So luckily, though, it oh, is a, Jean. it is a group check, so. Um, now, Killith, give me be a stealth roll with disadvantage because you are running and jumping 20-some 50 feet. Okay. And hopefully landing without dying. <gasps> I got a 19. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, you're pretty stealthy with your jump. Rhea rolled pretty good I on hers. Like a, like a roll. Like uh, so, ooh, uh, Annie, you just logged back in. Yep. Okay. Oh. Wonderful. Uh, okay, you guys feel really stealthy. You guys can move across. Okay, I'm gonna like usher everybody through and and point towards that door. Okay. 
So, every, yeah, everybody, like, runs as quietly as they can. They get close to the door. The door opens into, so an, into a hall. And right as you cl close the door, you see, like, out of the corner, you saw some people about to turn the corner. But you okay. don't feel like they saw you. Okay, stealthy boy, you hear anything through these doors? All right, here we freaking go. All right, um, I'm going to start with this one on the... Does it look like I can bar this door that's behind us? Uh, there's not... You could maybe rip down the tapestries that are on the wall and use the pole to bar the door. But other than I that... I would I take also... Take a scoop out, out of my backpack and bar the door. Okay. What I do you do? Doing that. I, I take I, a spear out of my backpack and bar the door so that okay. no one can... Okay, yeah, try to open it. In case we make a noise in there, I don't want them running in right here. Uh, 15. 15? Uh, you do not hear anything in this next room. Okay, this room is silent. Go over here. here. Check this door. Perce okay. uh, perception check? Yes, it would be a perception check. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, you hear... Um, you hear uh, just some, uh, a low voice, uh, a woman's voice singing just nonsense. You, you can't really tell the words that she's singing. It's got like a, a nice little melodic tune to it. She's like, the time to do the thing, and I will dust all night. A do do do, clean the thatch. You do the things. Okay, <laughs> beautiful. Um, uh, I'm gonna say there's someone in this room. I'm gonna advise we go through this door. I didn't hear anything through here, so I'm gonna open the door. Okay, you open the door. This room. Uh, what is this room? Uh. Dylan's little thing was covering it. Um, you enter this room and it contains four single beds and a dining room table. It looks very sparsely decorated. Uh, it does. It, it looks. It looks like servant quarters. Careful of the windows. Make sure no one doesn't see us. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna like, like try getting down low, so I stay below the threshold of the window. Okay. Uh, Amory, and you do see with your with your night vision a group of, of guards walking past the window. <laughs> At this point, I have taken my crate and put it back in my bag. So it's not grinding against the floor. <laughs> okay. Um... So it's just just these ta just a table with chairs and four beds. Table, chairs, four beds. There's not okay. another door in there. There's a door to the oh, north. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check. If that. I can't see it from where I am. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nat twenty. Okay, with a nat twenty, uh, you see a little bit of light under the door, and you smell a lot of really good things. Uh, coming from this room, uh, and you hear the sound of a wooden spoon on a pewter cauldron. Okay. Uh, and you also hear, wow, wow. It's a very, it's a very boisterous cat. Wow. <laughs> Slobber chops is just. Children. Just wait, slobber chops. I will get you your meat. <laughs> slobber. God. That's the best name for a cat I've ever heard. Taking notes for my. No, 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 no. Colton's cat name was the best cat name I've oh, yeah. ever heard. Yeah, uh, our friend Colton had a cat named Caddy Wampus. <laughs> um, I'm going to relay to everybody else. Um,. There is a person in this room, however, they just sound like a cook, and they have a pet with them. Just a cat. Okay. So... Probably intimidate them to keep quiet, depending on where they're at. We can try to do that. Um... Can I... Can I just quietly open the door? Like, Give me a stealth check! Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Uh, 17? You feel pretty stealthy. You want to open that door? Yes, I do. Because we got nowhere else to go. Why okay. Is she gonna tie down? <laughs> uh, you open the door and you look. There is a woman uh, whose back is to you. Uh, she is up at the fireplace uh, stirring a pot that is in the fireplace. Uh, she is... Uh, she is... Uh, you know, youngish. Her hair is done up in a bun. She has a uh, big apron on. Uh, there seems to be flour all over the countertop on the left. Uh, and you see, uh, well, let me see. Yeah, you see this really fat, fat cat. Uh, and, and you think that's all it is until it begins flapping its wings and it flies over to her and starts pawing at her. Meow. Damn it, slobber chops. I will get you your meat in a second. Meow. Imrian, can you do something about the cat? I could kill it. You could kill it. Um, because I'm going to try to either suppress her, like like put her to the floor and put the okay. Put she turns. She holding. turns a little bit and moves to the table to, that you see to her left. Okay, just go. She's, just go. She's yeah. messing with uh, some things there. It looks like she's kneading some dough. About to make biscuits for the morning. Okay, I'm gonna stay low and um, uh, go behind the table here. So right. In okay. Here. Um, Amrian, what are you doing? Later, man. Um, I'll just follow behind you. Okay. That cat's gonna be a problem. Hmm. Yeah. Do you want? Do you want to time it on three? On three. Okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is she's at, she's so kneading the dough at this table in front of her working at it. Slabber Chops seems to be just like doing that cat thing where it moves between your legs even though it's inconvenient. Okay. Um, so how are you going to take care? How are you going to take care of the cat? I'm going to try to like, I'm going to try to subdue it without killing okay. it, but I can't get, if I can't subdue it without that, I might end up killing it. If you need to kill it, just do it. Um, I feel like both of us just hurt our soul saying that. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay. On three, one, two, three. And okay. Gonna... What do you guys do? So I'm going to run, I'm going to like bypass the cat. I'm going to jump for her and my attempt, what my goal is I'm going to knock her down. I'm going to put the bo the removable rod to her throat so she like can't scream for help. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, give me, oh man, what is that? The athletics? Give me a strength. Strength check? Yeah. And add your proficiency bonus to that. That was on the floor. Ooh, 19. You sprint across the room. Your, your footfalls barely even registering on the ground. And uh, you tackle her to the ground. And as she's about to say something, you slam the immovable rod hard on her larynx and press the button. So like, she's like trying, she's trying to yell out, but she can't. I'm it's gonna like, get right, I'm gonna get right in her face and say, you peep, you'll be the last thing you ever say. Got it? She nods. Uh, give me an int intimidation check. That was really close to the microphone. <laughs> Um, what is uh is that a uh intelligence or oh, it's a charisma intimidation is, an, is charisma okay um 17 oh she she like her eyes widen in fear and she gives like the tiniest nod possible I, like, I slowly i slowly un unsheath my dagger and i'm like i'm not messing around and now amrian what do you do to slobber chops I grab him up and try to just lightly choke him out. Wow! Uh, give me an attack roll. 
slobber chops. Wow. I could have been your pet, Mao. Yeah, why didn't you do that? I don't, cause attack roll with what? Just an attack roll? Uh, My just frequency? A, yeah, just an attack roll. Uh, if you're do using your hands to choke it out, give me an unarmed strike. Yeah. I do zero damage with that. Just give me an unarmed strike. Twelve. Uh, yeah, that's its armor class. You choke it out. It's unconscious. Okay, I didn't want to nice. kill the cat. Oh. Non-lethal damage. I let it be non-lethal damage. Thank you. Could you have specified that you were doing like a non-lethal choke? Yeah. Okay. Slobber shops unconscious. So I'm. Uh, I'm gonna look at her and I say. Using your using your arm, you know your finger, point which way Thavius Krieg is, up or down. She shrugs her shoulder. Uh, why would she know where he I'm is? Because you know I may assume that maybe that she had been she had seen him. Um. All right. Well. Um. I mean. Uh... The boys' rooms are upstairs, so I don't know. Maybe he's in in the basement. I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't know. She's speaking like this, actually. <laughs> okay. Which way to the basement, then? Basement. All right. Well, thank she you. Like, she like she like nods her head to the west. Okay. So towards the door. Um... Yeah, the northern northwestern door. Okay. All right. Thank you for the information. I take out my dagger, pommel side down, and I and I hit her in the temple to knock her out. Uh, give me a uh, uh, give me a dagger attack with advantage. Digger. Do, do, do with advantage. <laughs> do that damage. Uh, she is unconscious. Okay. She was a a commoner. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper to everyone quietly come into the room. Everything's been taken care of. Uh, I'm gonna drag her over here, kind of like in the corner. Okay. So that she's not she's not being shown by the fireplace light. Okay. That cat. Oh my god. Meow. <laughs> Just a majestic kitty, which I'm glad I didn't have to kill. Yeah. Poor Matomi, all by herself. Work. How do you always get left behind? <laughs> like, what is going on? She's she's Christmas shopping. Shut up. <laughs> okay, I'm a perception check this door. Okay. Uh, fourteen. 14. Oh. With a 14, you do not hear anything behind this door. Okay, and that's the door that she gestured to? Correct. Okay. I'm gonna open... The... Well, uh, does someone else want to check the door down here? Uh, I'll the, do the door this one right here. Okay. Reception. <clears throat> 18. Uh, you don't hear anything behind that door. Okay, this one's clear. Okay. Uh, yeah, you open a door. You see, there's a barrel to your north. Uh, it has a little bit of a like a tap near the the bottom of the barrel, uh, and there's a stairwell that goes down. Okay. Um, whisper to everybody. Room is clear. We have a basement. We have a basement stair step. And I am going to start descending. Okay. Is everyone going downstairs? So let me know so I can select everybody and move them over all at once. Yes. I'll be following Amrin at Emerald at a little bit of a distance so he can I don't mess up himself, but yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just delete this. It should go dark because there are you can't there's nobody on the map. Who blinded me? My eyes. 
And actually, I'll have to activate a different map, to be completely honest. Um, come on. Oh, no, it's lagging. No, I thought I found a lagless, lagless thing. Legolas? Uh, yes, Legolas. Lagulous. Okay, uh, let me make it dark, dark, dark. And I will add you... Oh. I'm gonna be I have to pee. Okay. For the audience at home. All right. <laughs> so much fun. I'm certainly enjoying myself. Honestly, like the this is the experience that Foundry is providing. I am so happy we switched to it. It roll 20 does not compare. Right? The just you guys opening up the doors. It, um it, just how many steps is it clear from you? What'd you say? Like how many steps did you have to go through to open doors in roll 20? I had to change what layer I was on. I had to change to the wall later. I had to select the door. I had to delete or move the door out of the way. Sometimes it would be finicky, so I wouldn't even get to what I needed to do. Yeah, it was annoying. All right, I'm activating the scene. Oh, yeah. Everything was white. Uh, and I will shift click you guys to where your uh, tokens are. I hate to tell but why can I see all these lighted areas that I shouldn't be able to see? Can you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I'm probably shouldn't be looking at. Okay. Uh, give me a second. I'm Glad sending I you. I'm sending you elsewhere so I can figure out what's happening. Lovely. Or yeah, I can see the entire map. Used. Okay, lovely. I can't understand why that would be the case. I activated a different room. Uh, so you guys. I'm back. Hey, are you guys on the villa again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're there. Okay. Uh, uh, let me. S am I supposed to be able to see no. something? Do you okay. see anything? Okay, just making sure. No. Oh man. No, it's pitch black. It's that just you do not own a token with vision on this map. Which, which, that is good. Uh, I need to see what's, uh, configure, uh, oh, of course, token vision isn't on on here. Of course it's not. Why would it be? That would help just a bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, so I turn that on I need to wait for the map to reload. All right. Okay, I'm going to activate it, and hopefully you won't see the entire map. Nope, we're good. No. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I can finally see. Okay. Whew. Okay. Uh, I, okay. Just, that I, was... just praised, I just praised you, uh, Forge. Don't do this to me. Yeah, that was... Um... Oof, okay. okay. Oof. Uh, four stone pillars brace the ten-foot-high vaulted ceiling of this dry cellar, the walls of which are lined by a dozen barrels on wooden braces. Half the barrels have brass spigots tapped into them. The room also contains two stacks of wooden crates, one in the middle of the room and another by the south wall. Um... As you guys begin entering the room, the crates in the center of the room begin shifting and sh sliding around. Oh, uh-oh. I'm ready a firebolt. Oh no, for some reason, uh, I don't have any vision. 
as my DM guy. Okay, I have vision now. Weird. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> yes, I figured it out. I have vision now on my DM uh, camera. We're doing it live. We're doing it live, everybody. And as I say that, the uh, crates burst open and three large creatures that are purplish and uh, have weird, uh, weird long limbs and teeth that are uh, dripping with saliva and just they're covered in hun like spines everywhere. So much for this. So much for the sneaking mission. And uh, that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. As those uh, lovely things jump out of the crates at you. Uh, uh, uh. I didn't even see what they were. I'm gonna get you. Uh, spined. They're spined. Hmm. Uh, let me see if I have a uh, if I have art for you for uh, this. Let me see here. Player handouts, creature and monsters. Uh, uh -huh. um, let me make sure that that's what these are. Uh, double click. Come on. Do it. Do it now. Do it. I want to know what you are called. Is it because the game is paused? You know, that's a good question. It is. It is because the game was closed. Was paused. All right. Okay, um, shut up. <gasps> and that is the creature that is bursting out of well, the, one of the three creatures bursting Why out of the. What is it in the basement? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! The basement. Because if it was up on the surface level, it'd be kind of weird to see devils walking around. Right? Um, and uh, that is... That's where we're going to end tonight, guys. So, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for watching this lovely session. Session 29 of Donuts and Dragons Descent into Avernus. Uh, hopefully, we will be back next week and not, like, four weeks from now, because that would suck. Would suck. Um... It would suck a lot. Uh, thank you to not Roll20. Roll20 can die. Thank you, Foundry <laughs> VTT. Uh, and thank you, uh, Sirenscape, for all of the music and sound effects you have heard in tonight's episode. Uh, see you guys next time.